Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Fursati podcast, where our goal is to inspire and educate people in the MENA region through meaningful conversations with accomplished leaders, educators, and entrepreneurs. I'm Nadia Abdullah, your host from Injaz Al Arab. Today, we have a very special guest joining us, our very own Emmalyn Green, the learning design developer from Junior Achievement Worldwide. Today, Emmalyn and I will be talking about the journey of Injaz Al Arab and Junior Achievement Worldwide as they have worked together to revamp the company program. Welcome, Emmalyn. Thank you so much. So excited to be here and talking with you today. Um, really appreciate you having me and happy to be here. Thank you. We're really happy to have you. And I've been so excited to be um, working with you on uh, the, the new company program. So let's kick this off, Emmalyn. Tell us, um, what inspired you to embark on revamping the company program? Uh, well, a wonderful question to kick us off. So JA Company Program is our flagship program and has been helping students develop their entrepreneurial mindset and competencies for over 100 years. And so we really saw an exciting opportunity to take this program to the next level by incorporating new concepts and elevating local initiatives happening around the network. And so thanks to the generous support of PMIEF, we are able to take these efforts globally and revamp the company program to ensure it includes project management components that help every student succeed in today's global economy. That's amazing. Yes, a big thank you to um, PMI. I know that those project management elements are crucial to the company program and also to the preparation of the 21st century learners as well. Absolutely. And so, Nadia, thinking about those crucial elements for our learners and learners in the MENA region, um, as someone deeply involved in the MENA region, how did you tailor the company program to fit the local context and needs? Um, so just like any other program or initiative that we take on at Injaz, we really try as much as possible to bring in as many stakeholders as possible to make sure that whatever we do is deeply rooted into um, local context and needs. So adapting the company program to the MENA region involved a deep understanding of the cultural, economic, and social dynamics unique to each country. So like I said, we worked very closely with local educators, business leaders, community stakeholders um, to ensure that the curriculum addressed relevant challenges and opportunities. This also included incorporating content and feedback from all stakeholders within the MENA region, including member nation staff, alumni, volunteers, and partners to ensure that the learning experience was meaningful and impactful for participants. So while it may seem like a lengthy process, it was a very useful and impactful process to make sure that the company program is as deeply rooted in local context as possible. I think that's so incredibly important. And I, I think that really shined through in the regional company program for Injaz, getting to see those local examples and how powerful they'll be for our students. Definitely, definitely. And you know, Emmalyn, as uh, we work together on this, I'm sure it wasn't all um, a piece of cake as they like to call it. So from your point of view, what were some of the challenges that you faced during the revamp process and how did you overcome them? Ah, great question. So I think a big thing to consider is since this program has been around for over 100 years, there has been truly incredible localization that's happened around the network and continuing to happen to this day. And so we wanted to ensure that this process really captured and elevated the localized components while at the same time ensuring that fixed components of the company program and new elements such as project management were integrated throughout. And so after many discussions and ideation sessions, um, I think across the network, we really saw the need for a regional approach. And so we began our work with you um, and your team in Injaz, and that process has just been so fruitful. Like you said, really getting the feedback from all the local stakeholders, um, you know, with our JA staff members, but as well as our volunteers, you know, community members, the businesses. Um, and now we're starting that process with Asia Pacific and up next Africa. And so we're just really excited, although 
there's so much amazing content out there. It's a really op wonderful opportunity to elevate that and to regionalize the company program um, through each individual region. Definitely, Emmalyn. And I think the beauty of uh, the revamped version is that all across the world, we have those main components rooted into the process. But at the same time, every region is um, pretty much free to select how they want to localize and diversify maybe some of the examples that are stated to make sure that it's uh, culturally appropriate and, again, deeply rooted into um, a localization element. So thanks Absolutely. for that. Yeah, no, of course. I think that really aligns with the fixed, flexible freestyle approach um, that we have across the network. And so I know um, within Jazz, there was a lot of thought that went into those fixed, um, flexible and freestyle approaches as well. And so a follow up question for you and your team, how did you ensure that inclusivity and diversity were really incorporated into the new company program? So, um, Emmalyn, we are really focused on the idea of differentiation when referring to inclusivity and diversity. So they, they're both at the center of our redesign uh, of the company program. We actively sought input from diverse voices and backgrounds during the development process to ensure that the curriculum was accessible and relevant to all of our young people, regardless of their gender, socioeconomic status, or even geographical location. We obviously had various sessions with um, company program managers uh, on a regional and local level in all of the countries. And we also spoke to volunteer students, um, alumni who constantly reviewed the material and provided their insight to ensure that the content is as inclusive and diverse as possible. Again, in the revamped version, we talk about differentiation, innovation management, project management, and we even introduce a prerequisite course to make sure that there is a diverse aspect um, that encourages the learners to take on the company program. We also offer students in the new revamped company program the opportunity to select a particular track that would actually enhance their original idea. So we have six tracks, track one, innovation and technology, with a heavy focus on SDG9, industry, innovation and infrastructure. Track two, which is digital media and creation, that focuses on SDG12, responsible consumption and production. Track three, circular economy and sustainability, that focuses on SDG11, sustainable cities and communities. Track four is the artificial intelligence track that focuses um, again on SDG9. We then go back and discuss industry innovation and infrastructure. Track five, renewable energy, which is which also focuses on SDG7, affordable and clean energy. And finally, track six, which is the fintech track that highlights SDG 12, again, responsible consumption and production. So obviously through these different tracks, the students take um, a particular masterclass that provides content and examples from the MENA region to ensure that the students are well-rooted in this particular track that enhances their idea. And this way we further enhance the idea of diversity and inclusivity when it comes to uh, learning throughout the company program. Ah, that is so inspiring. And I just, I think these tracks are such an amazing opportunity, like you said, with differentiation and to really give the students opportunities to perhaps learn about, you know, different industries and SDGs that they didn't before. Um, so just really, really excited to see all of that play out in the revamped company program. Oh, definitely. I think it's going to be an amazing opportunity for us to even see examples of new companies from different tracks and um, getting the students to really highlight um, more of their learning journey into their companies that they will be developing in groups. So on that note, Emmalyn, do you have any success stories or moments from the revamping process that you'd like to share with us today? Hi, uh, yes, there have been so many inspiring moments. I think it's hard to pick one. Um, however, most recently, I've had the opportunity to go through this process now, kicking it off with Asia Pacific Next. And as you know, we're going through the student guide, I'm referencing the volunteer guide, and then I'm referencing the videos and the masterclass tracks. And 
this and that. And I think it's just been so amazing to see how much has been developed through this revamp. Um, I would truly call it like a toolkit around company program. And Nadia, like truly thank you to you and your innovative spirit. Um, I think we've revamped the existing content while also adding some really exciting new content like those masterclass tracks, the prerequisite course, the student samples. And so um, for me, a big success has been having the opportunity to work with a leader in education who is just so inspiring and creative because I think these new components, um, in addition to, you know, in revamping the existing components really have created something special and exciting that I can't wait for the network to be able to experience and for our students, like you said, to go through and see um, what they can create because of this. Thank you so much. And likewise, it's been great working with you and your team, getting feedback, new ideas. Um, the team's calls were always fun. So I enjoyed this process just as much as you have, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> um, and so I guess, you know, on that note and thinking forward um, with this new company program, the revamped what kind of impact do you hope the revamped company program will have on the youth across your region? So our goal with the revamped company program is really to empower young people with the skills, knowledge, and confidence they need to succeed in the modern world. So by equipping them with entrepreneurial skills, financial literacy, and a mindset of innovation and resilience, we really aim to unlock their potential and create a new generation of leaders and change makers. We envision local youth and even global youth graduating from the program with a deeper understanding of business concepts, enhanced critical thinking abilities, and a network of peers and mentors to support their journey towards success. In the revamped version, we also focused on SDG education, and we did this to send out a clear and distinct message that every student, regardless of geographical location, has a role to play in making the world a better place. So in other words, um, Emmeline, we want the world to know that Arab youth do have a role to play within their local and regional communities, but they will also be pioneers in changing the world on a global scale. So by enhancing the company program and um, introducing SDG education, uh, Arab youth are also part of a global mission, not only a regional one, that's on one hand. On the other hand, we've also included and highlighted two other very important elements in the revamped company program. We highlight the importance of being part of an alumni uh, community like Gather. So although it, it, it exists and it's up and running and powerful, we are further pushing um, students in the MENA region to join that community, to add value, to share experiences, and to learn from students on a global level. And the introduction of the ESP, the Entrepreneurial Skills Pass, within the company program. So Arab youth and then obviously youth on a global level have the opportunity to continue the company program um, by taking the Entrepreneurial Skills Pass. Fab, on that note, I would also like to add that we're trying to change mindset through this new company program as well. Everybody walks away a winner, not only those who make the national competition or the regional competition, but every student who has gone through this program walks away a winner. The mindsets have changed, the thinking path has changed, and they, they walk away with so much more knowledge than when they've entered the program initially. So the impact that we at Injaz Al Arab hope will have on youth in the MENA region is massive. Um, we really want our students to continue shining and working towards a better world. Um, I love that. And I, I think it really emphasizes that this program, this learning experience is truly a journey, right? A learning journey. And there's so many opportunities throughout. Um, and I love that that's really been incorporated with the SDGs, like throughout their experience, they're going to be reflecting back on that, you know, all the pieces along the way leading into that ESP, um, just really exciting the way that it's been integrated. Definitely, Emmalyn. And, you know, we've included other elements on technology, AI. So how did you leverage tech and innovation when redesigning the company program, uh, Emmalyn? Yeah, so I think in today's rapidly evolving world, technology is a huge driving force behind all of our work. 
Um, and so in addition to those masterclass tracks and really emphasizing the role that technology can play in a business, um, we also really utilized it in our process of revamping the company program. Um, you know, things such as project management tools online like monday.com to really help keep us organized and on track as we worked through each component. Like we talked about before, there were so many different pieces to keep track of. And so I think it was really nice, um, the different filing systems online that we use to keep us organized. Um, we also, one of my favorites was leveraging online design tools like Canva. Um, this really allowed us to create beautiful products that we could guide, like the guide, and collaborate in real time. Um, and, you know, working across different time zones, it can be a little tricky sometimes, but I thought it was really nice because one person could comment. And when we were up the next day, just really that like back and forth was really helpful and got like real time feedback. And then, of course, like you mentioned, with artificial intelligence, AI tools such as ChatGPT, um, when used in a safe and secure way, can really help us to adapt the content, especially um, making sure it's relevant to the stakeholder groups. So considering that, you know, we're using some, you know, really amazing regional examples, but then we want to make sure we're presenting it in a way that really resonates with our high school and university students. It can really help us to adapt that and capture that in a really fun and engaging way. Um, so I think those are just three that stand out for me. There was many other tools used in the process as well. Um, like you even mentioned, Teams, Zoom, right? Like all these online tools to keep us connected. Um, I almost think of this as like our, our little business project that we had. And I think it's a really good example for our youth of how they can leverage tools during their business journey um, throughout from the beginning to the end to help their business um, idea company become as successful as possible. So I think overall it was really exciting to see the many ways technology can really help drive innovation in curriculum design, but also has a lot of application outside of that as well. Definitely, Emmalyn. I know there was a lot of tech tools used throughout the process. And, you know, like you said, technology is advancing. The introduction of AI has really um, taken over all of our lives. So I also really like the fact that we have um, a master class on artificial intelligence where students can explore that option if they want to even enhance um, their, their companies as well. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I know um, too, a big technology component with the modernized JA company program is the video components. And so I know there's also been special video series created for volunteers now with the revamp. So Nadia, what role do you see volunteers playing in the success of the new company program? So obviously the success of our entire network at JA is pretty much the fact that we have a volunteer approach you know, globally, but when it comes to the company program on a regional level and even a global level, we see volunteers as role models because they have a lot of ideas and experience when it comes to mentoring our young people um, throughout the company program journey. So their expertise, guidance, and passion inspire and empower our students to explore their potential, overcome challenges, and even achieve their goals. Volunteers also contribute to the diversity of perspectives and experiences within the program, enriching the learning environment and fostering a culture of collaboration and mutual support. So in other words, it's really all about the power of partnership. So the more we bring in volunteers, whether from universities, from you know educational institutions, or even private sector organizations, the more diverse we become in the offerings that we have, and in the lectures that we give and the support that we uh, extend to our youth. So obviously when it comes to, you know, the financial component of the company program, um, a financial expert would be the best person to deliver this course. So I do see that volunteers play a huge role in the success of the new company program, especially because it's been um, diversified into more than one track, which allows us on a network to also expand in terms of, you know, industry partnerships and even um, educational institutions and expertise. 
Definitely. I think the perspective that a volunteer brings into all of our learning experiences is so powerful. Um, and really just through our conversations, focus groups we've had with the new company program, that's been something that's been emphasized again and again. It's just that important role that they play throughout the company program journey. Definitely. And I think with the new uh, volunteer support videos, uh, guides, material, PowerPoints, the volunteers are going to feel even more comfortable and more confident when they present to um, to our youth. So on that note, Emmeline, I wanted to ask you about measurement. How do you measure the effectiveness and efficacy of the new revamped company program? So I think with this, thinking about, you know, JA learning experiences as a whole at the core of our prepare learning experiences, um, the importance of pre and post test assessments to really measure those knowledge and behavioral changes in our youth. Um, so in the new company program, you'll see that from the beginning to the end. Um, in addition to seeing how students' entrepreneurial and project management competencies grow throughout the course of the revamped JA company program, I also believe qualitative feedback from our JA staff members, volunteers, and educators is a really important measurement of effectiveness and efficacy as well. Hearing their stories, you know, getting their recommendations um, for, you know, future revamps, future additions that we can make, things that are going really well is really, really valuable. And I know, Nadia, you mentioned throughout our conversation the importance of that stakeholder feedback during this journey, um, but also hearing from them while it's being used with students and after is really, really core to the effectiveness. Um, and so in addition to their feedback, also one of my favorite parts is student success stories. Um, seeing how that program has impacted them, how it's helped them grow their entrepreneurial mindset. Every year, I'm just continually inspired by the innovative and impactful business ideas that students are creating during their CP journey. Um, so I really am so, so excited to see the continued innovation that the revamp CP will bring, um, especially what new ideas the masterclass videos could inspire, um, and as well as the incorporation of the SDGs. So I just, I think it's kind of a multi multi-prong approach. Um, you know, we have those core components in prepare, but then also really hearing back the stories from our youth, staff, volunteers, and educators. Definitely. I think you hit on all of the right spots, especially when it comes to impact reporting, listening to, to everyone uh, speak about the entire journey, and obviously the importance of ongoing feedback where, you know, we'll have multiple touch points, especially throughout year one, in order to um, listen to our learners and our stakeholders to see how we could even enhance and improve our uh, our program. So thank you so much, Emily. Yeah, of course. And I, I think on that note and kind of closing out our conversation today, but looking ahead, like you said, to the future, um, what are your aspirations for the future evolution of company program within the JA network, starting with Injaz? Um, so looking ahead, my aspirations for the company program within our global network and starting with Injaz are ambitious, very ambitious, yet achievable. Um, I envision the program continuing to adapt and innovate in response to emerging trends and challenges while remaining true to its core mission of empowering youth through entrepreneurship education. This obviously includes expanding access to underserved communities, leveraging technology to enhance program delivery, and creating strategic partnerships to amplify our impact. Ultimately, I hope to see the company program evolve into a global platform for youth empowerment, inspiring and equipping millions of young people around the world to realizing their full potential. And in particular, I really hope that the company program will inspire millions of young people around the world to become global citizens who are responsible for the change that we all wish to see in this very busy world. Beautifully said, beautifully said. Thank you so much, Emily. This concludes our Fursati podcast episode. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for working with us. And we hope to see you again soon. Thank you so much.